Good morning. Good morning. Scripture today is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, 38 to 50. Mark 9, 38 to 50. Mark 9, 38 to 50. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed us, and we forbade him, because he followed us not, not us. And Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give up a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in him, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off, for it is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth, the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes and be cast into hell fire. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. For everyone shall be salt of the fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. May he bless the truth into our hearts. And let us be in prayer. Blessed be thy name, O God, a, a name above every name here on earth. <coughs> Father, we, we bow humbly in thy presence, giving thee all the honor and the glory and the praise that we can. Blessed be thy name. Father, we thank thee for another day in your kingdom. We thank thee for the beautiful day that you have made for us to enjoy. We thank thee for the cooling of the temperatures that makes life a lot more pleasurable. We thank thee, our Father, for everything you do for us day in and day out. We thank thee for our, our food. We thank thee for our clothing. We thank thee for our housing. We thank thee for our transportation. Father, we give you thanks for each and every aspect of our life. Father, we ask your blessing upon each one here today and a special blessing upon those who would like to be here and are not able. Father, we pray for those that have special needs and special concerns. We pray for the Isley family and we just bless them. We pray for, pray for Linda Harris and we ask the Father to uplift her. We pray that you will continue to bless Eleanor and, and watch over her and pick her up. And Father, we pray for the Malvay family as a service today. We ask you to comfort them as only you can. Father, we thank you for this great nation that we live in. But Father, we pray that each one of us will do our part in turning it back to one nation under God. We thank you for our great military, especially those in harm's way. We ask you to keep them safe keep them strong, that they will be able to protect us and keep us free. Father, we just ask your holy 
blessing upon each and every one here. Those that are uh, in physical need, we pray for healing. Those that are in spiritual need, we pray for blessing. And Father, we just ask that you be with us each and every one. We ask you to be with us now, our Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to thee, my strength and my redeemer. A few years ago, the uh, Mensa Convention in San, San Francisco, and you all know that the Mensa are those that are having an IQ of 140 or greater, which certainly leaves me out. But several of them were gathered together for a meeting, and while they were eating, they noticed that the salt shaker had pepper in it, and the pepper shaker had salt in it. And so they got all these smart heads together and they formulated a plan and now how to shift the salt and the pepper from one to the other. And they came up with what they had there at the table. They had a paper plate and a straw and a napkin. And they got their plan together and they called the waitress over and they said, uh, did you notice this salt pepper? Salt shaker has pepper in it, and the pepper shaker has salt in it. And we've uh, lost. She says, uh, I'm sorry. And she unscrews the lid off of one and the lid off of both of them and just swapped the lids and said, There, now would you like one check or a separate check? So they got uh, a little common sense once in a while. Works a lot better than all the smartest brains in the world. But let's talk a little bit this morning about salt and salt shakers. Jesus described his followers as the salt of the earth in Matthew 5, 13. As part of the Sermon on the Mount, ye are the salt of the earth, he said. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. In Matthew's Gospel, these words fall into the Beatitudes and are interpreted as referring to Jesus' expectations of his disciples. Mark uses the same energy in this today's lesson in Mark 9.50 when he says, Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? A biblical scholar, William Barclay, interpreted Jesus' words this way. When a thing loses its essential quality and fails to perform its essential duty, it is fit for nothing but to be thrown out. Back in those days, Salt was really a valuable commodity. Salt was valuable for two reasons, as a preservative for food and also for a flavor enhancer for food. We all know how essential salt is for enhancing the taste of food. On some of our most popular foods, it really takes salt to bring the flavor out. In 1853, George Crumb, a chef in New York City, actually in, accidentally invented a popular new dish. An annoying patron kept saying, sending his fried potatoes back to the kitchen, complaining that they were salty. In an attempt to teach this nagging customer a lesson, Crumb sliced those potatoes just as paper thin as he could slice them, fried them till they was almost burnt, and then just drowned them in salt. Well, much to his surprise, the customer loved it. And so potato chips were and then. Now, 
what would potato chips be like without salt? Or how would french fries be without salt? Or popcorn? Obviously, we can overindulge in salt, but few people voluntarily go on a completely salt-free diet. When Christ said that we are the salt of the earth, perhaps he was saying that we should bring flavor to life as Jesus brought flavor to life. Years ago, a woman named Marge wrote to Thomas Stan Landers with a letter of complaint. In her letter, she says, I'm 44 years old, and my husband is also 44 years old. And by the way, he's a tremendous guy. We get along really good. No drinking, no gambling, no stir chasing. He has a good job, and our house is paid for. Our children are healthy and normal, and they do well in school. And the three older ones are in their teens, and we don't have a bit of trouble with them. So she says, why am I writing this letter? Because my life is blah, blah. Something is missing. It's like stew without salt. I have a certain emptiness. Can anyone here today identify with her? Many people in our society have that emptiness within their lives. Like this woman, their lives are just blocked. Something is missing. As this woman described her life, it's like stew without salt. How do we bring flavor to people's lives? We do it by showing them genuine concern. We let them know that somebody really cares about them. One Saturday in a small town in Michigan, they had a 5K race, and they had all different classes for all different ages, so they was all running together. And there was a little boy by the name of Bowden, and he was really, he was only nine years old, and he was really showing signs of fatigue. But behind him was a 19-year-old Marine, Lance Corporal Myles, and he noticed that Bowden was struggling and he offered him some encouragement and little Bowden looked up at him and he said sir would you just run with me as you know Marines don't leave any of their fallen buddies behind even if they're only nine years old and even if the Marine is carrying a full backpack it took almost 36 minutes for Bowden and Cal to finish that 5K race together. Their story was carried on the front page of Seal of Honor, which added these words, by his unwavering commitment to help those in need through his ability to inspire others by his unequivocal level of motivation. Lance Corporal Miles Kerr reflected great credit upon himself and was keeping in the highest traditions of the United States Marine Corps. I would like to think that followers of Jesus Christ would be as kind and as helpful to anyone that is struggling in life as this Marine was to this nine-year-old boy. Anytime we see genuine concern, anytime that we help in the time of need, we are making the world a better place. We are adding flavor to their lives. We are showing ourselves to be the salt of the earth. 
Recently, I heard about a woman named Martha who was fortunate enough to run into a group of women who would most certainly qualify as the salt of the earth. Martha is a 26-year-old woman who was diagnosed with ALS, which you all know that, the Gary's disease. Martha really needed help. And when this group of women from Evanston, Illinois, heard about Martha, they jumped into action. They began giving Martha 24-hour, around-the-clock nursing care. They bathed her, they fed her, they prayed for her, they witnessed to her. And Martha, who had not received Jesus Christ as Savior, couldn't understand how a loving God would let her get ALS. But when she saw God's love in these women, she eventually became a follower of Jesus Christ. Don't you imagine there was rejoicing in heaven when these women jumped into action to help Martha? Jesus said to his followers that they were the salt of the earth. It was a high compliment. We are to bring flavor to the lives of everyone around us by our genuine concern for others. That's the first thing that salt does. Salt brings flavor to food. Traditionally, however, salt has played an even more important role in the lives of human beings. For many generations, salt was the only way that we had of preserving food. Indeed, before the modern miracle of refrigeration, people were quite limited in the foods they could enjoy because they were limited in preserving food, especially meat for later use. In his book entitled Salt for Society, Author W. Philip Keller recounts many of his experiences as a youngster growing up in East Africa. His family lived right along the equator under very severe tropical conditions. There was no refrigeration available, and as a result, his family had no way of preserving meat and fish and fruit and vegetables. So like many generations before them, they used salt to preserve their food. Meat in particular would rapidly decay under the hot weather conditions of the equator, and salt was the only ingredient that would slow down this process. Keller recalls how tons and tons of beef and lambs and wild game was cut into very slim strips of flesh and was soaked in a very salty solution and then hung out to dry in the fierce sunlight of the equator. And what you would get when you did that is what we call up here jerky. Jerky. Keller never took anything but jerky with him when he went hunting. It made for a light and nourishing meal for the young hunter. Salt both preserved the food in the intense heat and offered great strength when it was consumed. That's always been so. Salt has been so valuable that soldiers of the Roman Empire received part of their pay in salt. And so that is the origin of the English word salary. In various areas, people in Ethiopia and other parts of Africa have used cakes of salt to pay their debts. Salt has been considered very valuable even in the land up until today. During the Civil War, General Sherman of the United Union Army charged one of his captains with aiding the enemy 
for letting the rebels acquire some salt. Sherman said, without salt, they cannot make bacon and salt beef. Salt is eminently contraband, and because of this, it's used in curing meats without which armies cannot march. Simply, we simply cannot overemphasize how important salt was to earlier societies, including our own. The question is, how do we, as followers of Jesus Christ, serve as a preservative in our time? Here is one answer. Are we not those who have been entrusted with the task of preserving for future generations the good news of Jesus Christ? Isn't that the essential task of the people of Christ? To be a witness to his presence in this world? I'm reminded of a popular television commercial some years ago, several years ago. Two golfers are playing a round of, of golf and a voice accompanies their efforts and it comes over and it says, the voice says, greens fees, $116. Graphite shaft clubs, $877. Lunch at the turn, $1350. Balls and tees, $36. And then the clincher, one miraculous shot, bounces across the green and into the cup a hole in one, and they have a witness, priceless. There are some things that money can't buy, but for everything else, there's MasterCard. If you ever hit a hole in one, I certainly hope you have a witness. Otherwise, no one would believe it. What Jesus wants are witnesses. People who will witness to this generation that Christ is alive and Christ is at work in the world. People who will testify to the difference his presence has made in their lives. People who, because of their credibility, will make it possible to preserve the teaching of Christ for later generations. We each need to ask the question whether our lives would convince people that Christ is alive in this world and has made a difference in our lives. Are we a witness for Jesus Christ? A man named Jeffrey Collins tells this story. It had been a trying week at work. Jeffrey worked for an organization called Love and Action. It was five o'clock on a Friday afternoon. He was just about ready to leave and looking forward to a quiet rest for a weekend and the phone rang. A quivering voice on the other said, in the line said, Jeff, it's Jimmy. I'm sick. I'm really, really sick. I've got a fever. Can you come over and help me? Well, Jeff tried not to show his anger. But, you know, after working 60 hours that week, looking forward to the weekend off, looking forward to going out to supper on Friday evening, he was a little angry that he got this call. But he tried to not show it to Jeff. And he promised to be right over. Even going over in the car, he was still angry and he was talking to God about it in prayer. And the moment that he opened the door and walked in, he could smell vomit. He knew that Jimmy had vomited. So he went in and he cleaned Jimmy up, wiped his brow off where he was sweating, 
And then he went and got a bucket of soapy water and started to clean up the vomit. And just then, Jimmy's buddy, Russ, came downstairs. And when he smelled the vomit, it made him sick. And he too moaned. And now Jeffrey had two men who came up after. And he was getting hotter and hotter by the minute inside, but he didn't let them show it. And then he said he heard Russ blurt out, I understand, I understand. And Jimmy said to him, what do you understand, Russ? And he says, I understand who Jesus is. He's just like Jeffrey. And suddenly Jeffrey began to weep. He hugged Russ. Russ and prayed for him. And that night, Russ, as well as Jimmy, decided to follow Jesus Christ. A few years ago, a very popular Christian book came out entitled Out of the Salt Shaker and Into the World. Out of the Salt Shaker and Into the World. It was subtitled Evangelism as a Way of Life. It was authored by Rebecca Manley Pepper. Salt is good, Jesus said, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it make it salty again? Well, Miss Pepper's thesis is, salt is good, but if salt stays in the salt shaker, what good is it? How can it flavor life if it stays in the salt shaker? How can it preserve food if it stays in the salt shaker? How do we get the salt that will change our world out of the salt shaker? Really, there is only one way, and that is for followers of Jesus Christ to live as Christ lived. Showing his love for all the world, for all the world to see. You are the salt of the earth, Jesus said. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? There is only one way for that to happen as well. That is for each of us to be drawing closer to him so that his love will radiate through us. You are the salt of the earth, said Jesus. Are we living up to that title? Let us pray. Father God, we thank thee for your son who came and taught us. We thank thee, our Father, for the expressions used that we are the salt of the earth. And Father, help us to live up to that title. Help us to do our part in helping those around us that they will see Christ's love through our lives. Help us, our Father, to be the kind of Christians that you would have us to be. We ask thee, our Father, to be within each of us. Guide our lives daily, not just on Sundays, but every day of the week, that we may live the kind of lives that would draw others to see Christ in us. In Christ's holy name I pray. Amen.